Hey, what's up guys, it's Jonathan, and just like with all my other iPhones, I plan on doing a what's on my iPhone style video. That way you guys can get an idea of what I'm using for protection, as well as the apps that I'm using. That way it might help you out if you might need something to spice up your phone. So without further ado, this is what's on my iPhone 8 Plus. So to start things off, I'm rocking a tempered glass screen protector from a company that goes by the name of Manto. It's an edge to edge screen protector. It's tempered glass and it's available in black and white so you can get it to match the front of your phone. It has an oleophobic coating and for 10 bucks, you really can't beat it. But if you want to go with more of a name brand screen protector, you can pick up a Spigen edge to edge screen protector on Amazon and it's like seven or eight bucks as well. So there's a lot of good deals out there and I'll leave both of these down below. In terms of the case, I'm rocking a Kadabi case. This is actually the sheath and I absolutely love this case. It gives me some drop protection, minimal drop protection, but some drop protection nonetheless. It's made of like a TPU rubberized material and it's very, very thin and provides an excellent grip. So as much as I love my Kadabi case, I definitely like to rock my phone with just a skin on it. And that's just to have that bare minimal feel. And if I just don't wanna have any bulk on my phone whatsoever, I will throw one of these on there. And this is a skin from Colorware. I stand by Colorware skins 100%. They are the best that I have ever used in terms of the adhesive and overall just durability of the skin. So I've been with iOS for a while and it does have its issues, but I love my iPhone. I think it's consistent and it gets me through the day. And that's the reason why I use it as my daily driver almost all the time. But I do have some issues with it, including their lockdown ecosystem and how they try to force you to use the apps that come stock on iOS. And I've been trying to venture out and remove those. And this first app that I have on my phone is step one, and that is the Google Calendar. So the Google Calendar app really isn't a big deal to most people. If you tap on it, you can see it's just like it is on Android. And you can see my day is packed, filled with the gym every single day. Really need to get on that, gotta get some weight down. But yeah, this is the Google Calendar and I, I like it. It's very simplistic, but it helps me stay within one ecosystem and I definitely prefer Google's apps over iOS's. And the next app I wanna show you is within the utilities and that is the Google Keyboard. So now I have almost Unity here because I have the Google Keyboard running and even though it's not full support, like on the lock screen for instance, it does give me a lot of support. So if I go into Google Keep here, I can type a note and you can see it's the Google Keyboard and I love the swiping feature. It's pretty much the same one found on Android, but I think that this one runs a little bit better, but that's just my personal opinion. The next app I want to show you is NordVPN. Now NordVPN actually sponsored this video, so huge shout out and thumbs up to them for making this video happen. And it's a sponsorship that I can 100% stand by because I've used it. When I went to China, I had to use a VPN in order to get on Google services and I use NordVPN. And that is just one benefit of this VPN application. It actually is able to be fully used and utilized over in China. On top of that, it connects to over 1,000 servers. There's no data logging since the company is out of Panama. It has super fast servers, 24 seven customer support, up to six simultaneous connections an automatic kill switch and military grade encryption. You also get unlimited bandwidth plus dedicated IPs are available upon request. NordVPN is available for most operating systems. So whether you're running iOS, macOS, Windows, or Android, you should be able to take full use of this VPN, which is really cool. You also get unlimited bandwidth and personalized IPs are available upon request. And right now you can try NordVPN risk-free for 30 days. So go ahead and head to the site and try it out or tap on the link in the description. So diving into the photo and video folder here, I have Lightroom, Snapseed is old, Filmic Pro is awesome if you're looking to step up your video game on your iPhone. It cost about like 20 bucks or 10 bucks, but if you want to unlock everything, I paid around $30, I think it was like 26, and that gives me log recording, plus you get a higher bit rate. Definitely worth it if you are trying to get more video out of your phone. Front row, I have a review coming up soon on. It's a vlogger's like dream. Basically you wear it and it can time lapse your day or you can do video recording and it has a screen built on it and it runs Android. It works really, really well. The Panasonic image app is for my camera. Full control is very, very expensive. Most expensive app I have ever bought, but it gives me wireless control to my red. So definitely worth it if you're in the red ecosystem. The slider one application links to my Edelchrome slider and it's not the one that you're thinking of, but I do plan on doing a video soon. So make sure you subscribe for that. It's a tool that should go in any videographer's bag because it's very portable and it's basically just an awesome little gadget. Magic hour, make sure that I record during golden hour if I wanna do so. 
and PhotoScan is a Google application that will scan photos using the camera on your smartphone and then store those photos into your Google Photos app. Typically, I use Google Maps whenever I navigate somewhere, but I recently switched to Waze and I love it. The interface to Waze is very simplistic and super easy to use. So if you look at the top, you have a search bar so you can type in an address or a store that you wanna to navigate to and it will search for it. You can do this by typing or by voice. If you swipe over, you can input your home or work address, store favorites, plan a drive, you can even log into your calendar and then get events that you have to navigate to. There's a lot more features, but overall, it's just a very um, user-friendly interface, and I definitely recommend it if you're looking for an alternative to Google Maps or Apple Maps. So for the longest time, I struggled with finding a music app that I personally liked. It was either the interface was ugly or the song selection wasn't up to my standards. I always had to switch. I went from Rhapsody to Spotify to Apple Music, iTunes Music, Pandora, pretty much I've tried them all. And I finally have found one that I'm content with and I'm going to use for a long period of time. And that is Pandora. I know I've already said I used it, but Pandora recently changed their service and now they offer individual song playing. So if you pay for their premium service, you can search for an individual song or album and play it just like you can on Spotify or Apple Music. The interface to Pandora is very simplistic, something that I like and have no complaints there. And it has Apple Watch Series 3 support. If you have the one with cellular, you can stream your music from your watch without um, having to have your phone nearby. Of course, you'll have to find like an album or something and then store it to your favorites and then just play it straight from your watch. You don't have to download anything or anything like that. Another thing is, if you choose to get Pandora Music through iOS, you're gonna pay $2 more than just going to their website on your desktop and signing up that way. So I recommend going through your desktop. It's like $9.99 a month versus like $11.99 through iTunes. Another way of getting away from iOS's stock apps is to replace your assistant. Even though Siri has been improved on iOS 11, it's still not Google Assistant. With that being said, I put Google Assistant on my iPhone. Now, of course, if I hold down the home button, it's still going to trigger Siri, so I just don't do that. Instead, I go to my home screen and tap on Google Assistant, and I ask a Google Assistant anything I may need, and it works phenomenal. A long time ago, I used Inbox, and this was back when you had to be invited to use Inbox, and I didn't like it. It was like a big mess, and I just couldn't grasp the concept of Inbox, and I always went back to Gmail. But Google has pushed out a lot of updates since the last time I've used it, and the interface is absolutely gorgeous, and I love Inbox, and I use it on my desktop now even. Now, in the past, I've always used Safari for my internet browser, but I recently switched to Chrome to keep everything in the Google ecosystem, and it's worked beautifully. They fixed the battery drain issue, and they've also fixed the bugginess of what used to be Chrome. So now, if you tap on it, it's just as responsive and just as fluid as Safari, and I definitely love it. The biggest thing with Chrome to me is if I tap on an email address, it's actually going to pull up Inbox for me to send that email. If I tap on an address, it's going to pull up Waze versus the Maps or Mail app that is built into iOS. So definitely giving me some flexibility there. The next new app on my phone is Honeydew. Now Honeydew is a finance app, but it has one main feature over other finance apps in the App Store. And that feature is the fact that I can link this app to my wife's app if she has the same one and we can jot down our expenses and how much money we made for the month to come up with a budget so we can see where our money is going all the time with an automatic refresh without having to go into a bank and come up with like a spreadsheet or anything like that very convenient and definitely something that you may need to put your spending in a perspective like i need it so moving right along, we have a few more Google apps, and this includes like Google Wallet and Google Home, and that's just because I'm staying within the Google ecosystem on my iPhone this time around, and it's worked beautifully. But some other new apps still from Google that I have on my phone include Google Express, which is a shopping app that will give you like next day shipping or next day delivery from stores like Target and uh, things like that. Google Trips is similar to Google Now, except it's only about your trips. Just like Google Now, Google Trips will actually go through your emails and it will detect if you have an upcoming trip. If you have one, it's gonna give you information related to that trip, such as sightseeing places or restaurants or um, how you're gonna get from point A to point B, things like that. And then you can really map out your trip and store all that information within this app. So when you arrive, you have your entire trip laid out in front of you. If you like to travel a lot, this next app is definitely for you and it's called Hopper. With Hopper, you put in where you're traveling from and where you're going to, and it's going to search and find the cheapest travel arrangements. And it's really cool because it will actually just continuously search and lock in 
a very cheap rate. Moving right along, we have Zagat. Now Zagat is basically like a Yelp replacement. It's gonna give you local reviews and ratings of restaurants wherever it is you're at. The only game I have on my phone is Terra Battle 2, and that's just because it's from the makers of Final Fantasy, and I love that series. And lastly, I have a folder for AR, which is augmented reality. Nothing fancy going on here. Now, Filmer is not necessarily an AR app. It just has some AR features. So like you can throw an animated character into a video that you're editing on your phone. It's actually a video editing application for your mobile device. Swiping over to that last page, I have my final app. It's Plex. Now, Plex is a media server that does so, so much more. Not only can you store your music and movies and pictures in their media server and access them anytime from any device, you can also stream live TV and then use the built-in DVR feature to record shows that you might miss. So it's a powerhouse of a media server or just media, I don't know, media lover's dream. You can definitely use Plex to cut your cable if you want to, and it's about 120 bucks for a lifetime subscription. So something that you might want to check out and you can find that link down below. Well guys, that's been what's new on my iPhone 8 Plus. I hope you enjoyed this video and you were able to take something from it. If you did, let me know in the comment section what that thing was. Was it the case, the screen protector, the uh, skin, or was it an app? I wanna know. Let me know down below as I'd love to hear back from you guys. If you aren't following me on social, go ahead and do that as it's definitely an easier way to communicate with me. Um, but I do try to look at the comment section as much as possible. If you guys aren't subscribed, go ahead and do that and then hit that notification bell so you can be alerted when a new video drops. And of course, I'll talk to you in the next one. Be easy.